Hedgerows. You might have heard that word in association with the plantings on farms in England, but there are lots of hedgerows being planted in California. Hedgerows originally totaled about 500,000 miles in England, which is the distance from the Earth to the Moon and back. Wild Farm Alliance has an ambitious goal to inspire 25% of U.S. farms to plant a farmland wild way, having an average of one mile of hedgerow or windbreak leading to 500,000 miles of living field borders. Hedgerows have been planted in agricultural landscapes for thousands of years. As early as the Bronze Age, 3000 BC, fields have been enclosed with these plantings. Ancient hedgerows were used to confine livestock, define property lines, shelter farmland and dwellings from the wind, and provide food, medicine, fodder, and wood. Hedgerows are defined as lines of shrubs, trees, or smaller perennials that are planted along along roadways, fence lines, field borders, or other non-cropped areas of the farm. When we start working on a hedgerow project, we'll ask the farmer, why do you want this hedgerow? What are your goals? Many farmers want to attract pollinators and natural enemy insects, such as parasitic wasps, minute pirate bugs, and lacewings, lady beetles, and surfeit flies. Some farmers want to prevent dust from a road or drift from an adjacent conventional farm as well as wind protection or replacing weedy areas with perennial vegetation. Other growers want them generally to increase biodiversity, to have habitat on the farm for birds and other wildlife, for pest control, and to generally broaden the life of the farm. Some growers are hesitant to put in a hedgerow because of perceived concern over food safety risk. Studies have shown that many kinds of Conservation practices make farms safer than those where habitat has been removed. Practices such as hedgerows that intercept foodborne pathogens in the wind and grass filter strips which filter out pathogens in the water. Hedgerows can make farms more resilient to weather extremes that are occurring more frequently with global warming. Hedgerows can create habitat and corridors for beneficial insects, pollinators, birds and other wildlife that will be forced to move as climate changes. They can also increase water infiltration, help control erosion, protect crops from wind, and store carbon in woody stems and in the soil. 36% more carbon is stored in hedgerows than in adjacent farm edges. So when we get on the farm, we begin planning where the hedgerow is going to go. First, we identify some non-cropped areas of the farm and determine if they're suitable for vegetation planting. Then we look at those areas and we see if there's any other restrictions, such as if it's a really narrow area or there's not going to be access to irrigation. Sometimes there's other restrictions we can't see until we actually get to the farm. The next set of questions are, how long is the hedgerow going to be? How wide can the hedgerow be? Are there any height restrictions on the hedgerow? and what type of irrigation is going to be used for this hedgerow. The next step is determining when we're going to plant the hedgerow. Planting in the fall is ideal for the hedgerow planting because this gives a chance for the plants to get established during the winter rains so that they're prepared to face a long, hot summer. However, we really can plant and have had success planting in every month of the year. The only time where it gets a bit tricky can be in the winter if there's cold and heavy rains that prevent establishment. When it comes to choosing plant species, California native plants are widely adaptable. Native plants have evolved with and support a complex of insect and birds that help with pest control. We wrote the manual Hedgerows and Farmscaping for California Agriculture that has lists of native plants that are suitable for various regions and ecosystems of the state. From the nurseries, we always try to get one gallon plants because they're economical and they do well. What I have found is it's best to go to the nursery and look at the plants and find out that they're robust and healthy and not too old or small or not doing well. I have a story I like to tell. One time I went to a nursery and the deer had gotten in the nursery the night before and chewed the plants down. So I asked the nursery, do I have to pay extra for leaves? Are leaves extra? And it's just a good example of going and seeing the plants before you actually pick them up. When you go to pick up the plants, it's good to actually count them so you, you know you're actually getting 25 of these or 10 of those and you don't get back to the farm and they're missing plants. If you're picking up the plants in an open pickup truck, 
Make sure you cover them with a tarp or else the wind will harm them on the way back to the farm. We select plants based on the specific goals of each hedgerow. Some things that we look for are the growth characteristics of plants and their suitability to the environment at that site. Looking at which plants are native to your area is very helpful in determining what plants to put in your hedgerow. Choosing a wide variety of plants that flower throughout the season sequentially will ensure that you're providing beneficial insects and pollinators with resources all year round. Wild Farm Alliance's habitat assessment tool can be used to determine what beneficial birds are attracted to which beneficial plants on your hedgerows. A good way to ensure that your hedgerow is going to be successful is by spreading really strong what we call survivor plants throughout the whole length of your hedgerow. So these are plants with very strong stems that are known to survive through the elements very well. Plants such as coyote brush, quail bush, coffee berry, and sugar bush do very well to survive. Then in between these survivor plants, you can establish other plants in groups of twos or threes. Some of the plants that we've commonly used in hedgerows are California lilac, buckwheat, elderberry, manzanitas, flannel bush, sages, toyon, yarrow, and deer grass. Those plants are among the most common we use in hedgerows, but there are many other plants that are suitable for your native plant hedgerow. Now let's talk about some of the particulars of planting. First thing you do is make a bed or a berm that's six inches to a foot above the level of the soil. This is to make sure that the root crowns stay aerated in times of irrigation or heavy rains. The irrigation system should be set up and running and ready to move in after the plants are in the ground. So then you've got all your plants in a staging area. Separate them by species so that when it comes time to lay them out in the field, it's easy to, to know which ones go where. Then you dig a hole, not too big, not too small, slightly bigger than the size of a one gallon container. So once you have your hole, you put in a shovel full of compost to stimulate microbial activity. There's no need to use fertilizer with these native plants unless the soil is completely depleted. Fertilizer just makes these native plants grow big and then fall over. Fill every hole with water. Now you install the plant. You turn the pot upside down and tap it out. Don't grab it by the stem. You can break it, the root crown, but loosen any root bound roots. Put it in the ground. If there's a gopher problem, you can use gopher baskets or speed baskets. Use chicken wire enclosures if there's any kind of deer or rabbit problem. The root crown should be slightly elevated, not in a basin, but you want to bring the dirt up around the edge of the plant so the root crown is covered. There are many ways to irrigate, but one way we use is you can use half inch or three quarter inch tubing depending on the length. We put two emitters per plant, six inches to either side, two half gallon per hour emitters for shrubs, and two one gallon per hour emitters for trees. Holes in the tubing for the emitters can be made with a very handy tool called a stainless steel hole punch. When using a drip line, the tubing can be held in place by weaving it in and out between the plants and staples are not needed. And some growers will irrigate using sprinkler systems. Many of the plants we use are adapted to the dry Mediterranean climate and will only need to be irrigated up to three years to get them established. Generally, they will need irrigation once or twice in the dry season and they only need enough irrigation to keep them moist. The irrigation demands of these hedgerows are relatively minor compared to farm crops. However, in the Central Valley, some hedgerows will have to be irrigated forever. After planting, the final step is adding a six inch layer of mulch to smother the weeds and retain moisture. Weeding is a major maintenance problem that can be minimized with the use of mulch. When the plants are in the ground, we need to monitor the planting. We need to think of that as a crop. Is the irrigation system functioning? Are there any pest issues that have to be taken care of? 
photographs can be very helpful. And if there's any kind of mortality, you can look and see which plants in the hedgerow are doing well and replant with those plants. Watering is the biggest cause of failure in plants, either too much or too little. We want to get the plants wet, but then let them dry down a little bit, and then water them again, and never let them dry out and the soil get all caked and dry. The shovel is the best monitoring tool that you have for moisture. When planting a hedgerow, you could generally estimate one to four dollars will be the cost per foot of your hedgerow. This is including your labor, your site preparation, your irrigation, the plants, and also cages for herbivory and gopher baskets for gopher problems. Plants usually cost under $10 per plant. Shrubs are usually planted five to six feet apart and trees are planted 10 feet apart. The cost of your hedgerow will generally be recuperated over the following years from an increase in pest protection and from pollination services. Getting funding from agencies such as NRCS and other public and private agencies can further reduce your cost of the hedgerow. If this is your first hedgerow, you'll be learning about the benefits of diversity and you be, may be interested in some other conservation practices such as grass waterways, filter strips, windbreak, or riparian area. Creating a hedgerow opens up the farm to a wider world, connecting it with nature and the life that comes with an array of plants that are other than the crop itself. Beauty is a big part of our lives. And these plantings with the different shapes and sizes, the colors over the season, the various insects and birds and animals that come associated with this bring a whole new dimension to the farm and greatly expand the world of the farmer. Now it's time to go to the moon and back.